Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through the Port Adelaide versus Richmond game in which Port Adelaide smashed them, well didn't actually smash them in the end. They ran over the top of them I would say in the last quarter um, and basically any of the primos in this game because uh, Richmond had no tagger, uh, they didn't actually go off so it really didn't actually work at all. So that kind of sucks in a, in a nutshell. Uh, particularly Zach Butters, even um, Connor Rosie, and um, yeah, even Nan Curvis against uh, no Ruckman in Jordan Sweet. He really got held. So there was no good um, captaincy options in this game because no one was going for either Rioli or Wines or even Burgoyne there, which were the top three scorers, and they didn't even score that well with 112 and 2107s to bat. But anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload it, especially with AFLW content most likely coming up in the future, near future as the game is surely going to drop soon with only a month or so until the season for AFLW starts. So anyway, let's jump into this recap. So, Ollie Wines 107, I did a watch. A little bit of this game, I had them like on both, uh, tried to get both of the games on. It is quite annoying when you do have a double up um, of games starting at the same time. I believe this was a 7.30 or 7.35 double up or something or along those manner. And so, yeah, it was kind of hard to watch both games. But Oli Wines, 107, 32, 8, 26, 41, huge in the last quarter. He did get 32 touches, 8 marks, 2 tackles. No hit outs this week, not needed. Burgoyne, um, 24 touches, 4 marks, 7 tackles. He is progressing. The problem for him is he's sort of on that wing half-back role, so he's not really going to, I think, score consistently well. So he did average 70 for the year, which is prototypical of a, of a wingman. So I don't think there's much growth for him more unless he gets a different role um, because, yeah, he's just... To his characteristics are too akin to what a, uh, a winger will do. Uh, sort of very speedy out of the first couple of steps out of a stoppage. And so I don't think he has any movement more anymore. Dixon, uh, he's a goal sneak as well. So he just had a really good game and I wouldn't be surprised if he has a poor one next week. But not really too worried about that. Evans, he did score 101 in the end. I couldn't find a way to loop him at all just because Essendon had played earlier. Um, next week, I will be able to loop him if he does score really well, which will be a good thing. Um, will enable me to potentially move like a, um, a Nick Dacos into the midfield or something of that manner uh, to get him on, to potentially play him off or whatever, um, depending on who plays. But yeah, we'll definitely try and, because I believe Port we'll play the early game of next week. So we'll see how that goes there. But um, yeah, I thought he was really good. Good cash gen and 22 touches, 9 marks and a goal is always going to be worthwhile. And yeah, he's a surprisingly good package to have. Um, Rosie, 100, he just did his job. A little bit annoying in the last quarter with only 12, but um, didn't get up to a captaincy score, which was probably a good thing for me who had him only as a normal um, as a normal one times multiplier, if you want to call it that. Um, two goals, one for him as well. 24 touches, five marks, four tackles. Um, Boak kicked a goal this week as well. Um, one goal, two. So he's back to kicking behinds as well after kicking a goal, I think, early on, was it? Um, yeah, in first quarter, then kicked a couple behinds to start that trend again. 96 for him. He could maybe be relevant, but I don't think he will be relevant just because of these... 45 and 55, it really takes some 100 performances to get him back to uh, relevance, and I don't think that'll be the case with him. Uh, Willem Drew, 94. Dan Houston, 93. With everything that was said and done about him having the back line to himself, I was a little bit surprised that he did struggle to actually score. He did only get to a uh, 90, uh, 93, as we said, and only three in the uh, sorry seven in the last quarter. So, yeah, he really just struggled in the last Um Kind of surprising. Sweet, 91. Butters, 88. He sucked. Uh, like, it was so annoying. He had a 53-point second half. He just couldn't get going. Um, and, yeah, he ended up having 28 touches, one mark, two tackles, just no non-disposals and no goals, which really did suck. If he'd scored a couple of goals or something like that, he probably could have saved it. 
But yeah, just didn't get involved and that was my captaincy score down the drain with an 88-89 split on. So I should have just gone for the known product in uh, English against um, against Geelong, which really does suck that I didn't go that, given that I had lined that up like two weeks previous. Um, bu -bu -bum. Then you've got Georgiades, Mead, Bergman, Horn Francis. Horn Francis just isn't a fancy scorer. Alia, Burn Jones, Evans, Rioli, Thurk, Thatcher. No one else there really matters. Richmond, Rioli was nice to see this. We'll see how he goes um, for the rest of the year, but I don't think he'll be one that is fancy relevant given that um, he just doesn't have that scoring potential in him. Only uh, 28 touches, 5 marks, 4 tackles, and it took 2 goals to get him to the 112 marker. Um, so yeah, I'm sort of surprised that he didn't end up going a little bit uh, better, to be honest, kicking 2 goals. So that was a little bit surprising. Um, but anyway, it's Dan Rioli. He's not going to be fancy relevant. Hopper, 93, uh, 44 in the first term, and then really didn't get going after that. Um, he ended up with 25, 4, and 4. And two free kicks for so yeah, just around about that hundred marker. Um, with that that stat line, twenty eight four and four is around that hundred marker. Um, so yeah, just fell short of it, but not really fancy relevant given that he's not getting that one ten one fifteen that we really hope out of midfielders. Broad Prestia got on top early, kicked a goal early as well. <coughs> um, but yeah, outside of that, did nothing. Um, thirty one in the first, thirty in the second, and then fell off a cliff. So that is almost a big ton of Asian there with only 21 in the second half. Uh, short, mantle, Baker. I'm intrigued to see what happens with Baker with in terms of a new side, potentially meaning that he uh, gets a better role or something like that because at the moment his role um, I don't think is that, uh, that good. Let me just double check on that for you guys here. One second. Richmond, 2024, CBAs. Um, Dal Precio Baker here, 52% CBAs in round 19. So his role is on and off, on and off. And maybe he just isn't the greatest fantasy scorer or something like that just because he cannot seem to accumulate points um, when he's in uh, sort of that role. But, I mean, he did score in the end a 73, so it was a little bit up. But we'll just see where he lands at the end of the year because he may get a midfield role somewhere else or something if he changes his club. I don't know exactly, but we'll just see how that lands. Um, Nank subbed out. Trezai, 66. Not fancy relevant, I don't think. Um, Campbell, Bolter, Dow, McIntosh, uh, Miller, Green, Steely Green with a 50. He ended up kicking a goal there to get to the 50, so he did end up making a lot of cash. I'm pretty sure he's up around that 270 marker or so. Bolton with a 50 as well just sort of shows that I think he needs a... Um, a better role to be honest and he's an impact player at heart so he's not going to be uh, fancy relevant even though we have such a dour forward line uh, Smith, Ralph Smith, Banks, Brown, Kaczynski, Ryan and then Sonsi uh, Sonsi came on for a 10 and just exploded that uh, season average down a little bit but anyway that pretty much is the video there not much to talk about because Richmond aren't really fancy relevant and yeah, that pretty much is the, the factor there that means that they're not really going to need to be talked about too, too much. Um, and Port Adelaide, it's just really rosy and butters, I would think, at the moment because Wines isn't putting up scores consistently enough. And the likes of Boak isn't putting up scores enough even with the lower forward line average needed to get into the top six to eight there. So that is the video there and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.